Hello students, I am Harini. Let me first ask you, did you ever try helping your mom in cooking? The rice cooker or the curry pan right after cooking is hot a touch. Only because of heat, the food turns cooked from raw. So, heating is actually helping us mold the substance into something that is useful to us. Today, let's learn the impact of heat on various substances. We call it action of heat on substances. Heat is one of the different forms of energy. When a chemical substance is heated, you can see certain changes in it. Let us see some examples. Changing to night. Change in seasons from winter to summer are two small examples. All the changes are not of same type. In some cases, we can get back the original substance or retain it. On the other hand, in some cases, it is not possible to get back the original substance. A reversible change is a temporary change which can be undone. Melting of ice is an example of reversible change. Let us see this example. If we take few ice pieces in a beaker and heat them slowly, the ice pieces melt and form liquid. If the heating is further continued, water changes to water vapour. If water vapour is cooled sufficiently, it converts to liquid water. And on further cooling, water freezes to give ice. Now, let's understand what an irreversible change is. An irreversible change is a permanent change that cannot be undone. For example, heating a substance while cooking is an irreversible change. When vinegar is mixed with bicarbonate of soda, we can observe the release of carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles. Again, here, we cannot get back the original substances. In another example, if we heat solid calcium carbonate, evolution of gas takes place. The solid residue obtained will have less weight than the parent calcium carbonate. CaCO3 on heating gives rise to CaO plus CO2. We can understand these facts. When you heat ice, only the physical state will change while the composition will remain the same. When you heat calcium carbonate, both the physical state as well as composition will change. So, we can conclude that when chemical substances are exposed to heat, their composition may or may not change. Physical properties include shape, size, color and state of matter. Let us observe this example. Here is a chocolate ice cream you would love. It is lying outside and melted because of high room temperature. But this melted ice cream will be put back in solid state only when it is put in a freezer. When the ice cream melted, its state of matter changed from solid to liquid, which is a physical property. Note that no new substances were created. Let us see an experiment for physical change. Take copper sulfate crystals. Then add diluted sulfuric acid to water and set it to boil. Once the mixture boils, copper sulfate powder dissolves in it. Keep adding the powder until it can't take more. Now, the solution is set to cool without any disturbance. After some time, you see the crystals settled at the bottom of the solution. 
These are copper sulfate crystals and this process is called crystallization. Here no new substances are created. Hence this is a physical change. When some amount of paraffin wax is heated in a crucible, it melts into liquid. Upon cooling, the molten wax solidifies. So, on heating the wax, a change in physical state is taking place. Usually, when a solid is heated, it converts into a liquid. If the liquid is further heated, it changes into gas. But certain solid compounds like ammonium chloride that is NH4Cl and iodine I2 when heated will directly convert into vapor without passing through the liquid state. This phenomenon is called sublimation. The gas so produced when cooled converts to solid without passing through the liquid state. Sublimation can be demonstrated experimentally. Take a few milligrams of iodine in a test tube and close it by a cork or glass lid. Heat the test tube gently. Solid iodine slowly changes into vapor and deposits on the cooler parts of this test tube. Take ammonium chloride in a test tube and close it by a cork or glass lid. Heat the test tube gently. Solid ammonium chloride vaporizes into white dense fumes and gets deposited as a white solid on the cooler parts of the test tube. When a piece of iron is rubbed against a magnet, it tends to behave like a magnet and starts attracting iron pieces. On heating, the piece of magnet loses its magnetic property and becomes just a piece of iron again. Let us see this reaction. Take a pinch of powdered zinc oxide in a dry test tube and heat it gently. It does not melt or give out a gas but turns yellow. Cool the test tube now. You can see the yellow color vanishing and becoming white. Take a pinch of powdered lead oxide in a dry test tube and heat it gently. The yellow colored lead oxide turns into brown. Now cool the test tube. You can see the brown color vanishing and becoming yellow again. When heat produces a temporary change, composition of the substance remains the same and no new substances are formed. But there is only a change of state. This is called physical change. The physical changes produced in the substances by heating can be reversed on reversing the conditions. The change takes place only in the physical properties of the substance like state, color, volume, etc. The composition of the substance will not change. The change is purely temporary and reversible. There is no change in the mass of the substance undergoing physical change. Physical change can be brought by other sources of energy like light and electricity.